Thank you, everybody. My name is Steve Kramer. I'm the executive director at Project for Pride and Living, and thank you very much for, for coming out. We purposefully uh, scheduled this uh, open house in May because the weather would be perfect, and uh, actually it turned out better than it could have been, apparently. So we're grateful for that, and really grateful that you all could, could come. I think with this crowd in particular, I don't need to say that uh, projects like, like this are hard to, hard to put together and take a long time, and this one certainly fit both of those, uh, both of those uh, 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 qualifications. Um, but it's certainly worth it. As I was driving over here, I heard uh, an analysis that Minnesota still has the most difficult rental market in the Midwest, so we know affordable housing is a huge challenge. I know that several people in the audience started the day at Dorothy Day Center, kind of dealing with uh, the challenge of homelessness, which a project like this helps address at another point along the way. So I want to thank uh, all the many people who, who uh, uh, helped contribute to the construction of Fort Road Flats, and they were, the professional team was listed in your, your program, uh, particularly highlight the folks from Urban Works Architecture. I think they did a great job. It's really quite a beautiful building as well as Watson Forsberg, and I know uh, Dale, uh, Dale Forsberg is here, so thank you for your, for your work. Uh, PPL staff on the services side, uh, Sarah Kaczynska, our Director of uh, Self-Sufficiency Services and Youth Development, uh, great job with Peter Elwell and their boss, Julie Brecky. Uh, on the development side, our team is very much uh, 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 kind of work as a group, and they're led by Barbara McCormick and Chris Chris Wilson, and so thank thanks to them. But we really have to take a moment and thank our project coordinator on this uh, project, Matt Sochek. Is Matt out here? There he is. Wow, those were some tough meetings, but uh, here we are. So. <laughs> But the, the kind of the three most important partners of all are, are represented up here and, and have distinguished guests, and we're really pleased that they took the time. Um, couldn't have happened without the city of St. Paul. And one person who isn't out here but who is in the audience, uh, former council member Pat Harris. Pat. Uh, as Pat walked in, I called him the founder of the feast. So. Uh, <laughs> But also the great work of PED. Cecile, thank you to you and your staff, Al Carlson and Eduardo, uh, and many other city staff. Uh, but you know, in my experience, both as a former elected official and a former staff, staff tend to follow the leadership of, of elected officials. And we're honored to have both uh, Mayor Coleman and Councilmember Tolbert here, uh, setting the, the stage for a really aggressive response to the affordable housing crisis in St. Paul. So Mayor Coleman, thank you, and welcome to your remarks. Thank you. Thanks to you so much. Uh, just thank you so much for your leadership, your staff, uh, just incredible. It is a great partnership. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is a better day, as you suggested, than it could have been. We didn't get the 16 inches of snow that they got just to our east. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's a little chilly, but the fact of the matter is, um, I think it helps us remember why we do what we do. Because, you know, when you think about what people, uh, the elements that people face in this community, uh, the, the weather being uh, the the chief kind of difficulty. Uh, this is not Southern California. You know, homelessness is a challenge anywhere. But when you think about the, the challenges that homeless families face, that people that are looking for housing, uh, that aren't living in stand, you know, that are living in substandard housing, uh, you realize why these places are so incredibly important. So today we celebrate 44 units of really quality housing in the city of St. Paul. The great partnership with PPL, uh, and and it was mentioned that uh, Councilmember Brenmon is out there as well. Um, but it was mentioned, you know, Pat's role in this, Pat Harris, and it, and it wasn't just that Pat as a council member was willing to stand up and say, you know, okay, we can do this. It was that he demanded this. It was that he said, I need this in my neighborhood. This cannot be, you know, solving these challenges can't be just done on the east side or in Frogtown or in other parts. I, this, this needs to be on West 7th Street. This needs to be in the third ward. This needs to be in Highland Park. And it takes that courageous leadership. It takes that, it takes that willingness to put yourself forward. So let's give Pat a big round of applause. He gets it. So the uh, the Coleman brothers have been kind of notorious in St. Paul for a while, right? You know, uh, if you know any of my brothers, you know that we're generally troublemakers, and we go around and we, you know, but you know, we've we've achieved a couple things every once in a while. But I just realized that there's there's a rival to the Coleman brothers, and they're the Coleman brothers. Um, and so Devon, come up here. This is Devon Coleman. <laughs> the, all right. 
So Devon is, uh, Devon is uh, what grade are you at Hancock? Fifth grade. He's a fifth grader at Hancock, right? His brother Donovan is floating around here, but I think Donovan went in for, for more cookies, <laughs> right? Did he? <laughs> or is he out there somewhere? Oh, he's out there. Donovan, come on up here. All right. So this is the next set of troublemaking Coleman brothers. <laughs> And it's good because I'm ready to pass the torch. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is when you think about what I have been able to accomplish in my life and why I was able to do that, it was because I had a safe place to live. I had a supportive network of folks. I had great places to play. Uh, I grew up just down the street in West 7th uh, when I was when, for the first seven or eight years of my life and, and, and thinking about how that foundation was set. And so when I think about what has been created here in these 44 units of housing, it is an opportunity for Devon and Donovan to thrive, to be the next leaders of our community, to be successful, to reach their full potential. And what we celebrate here today is much more than just providing housing units. It's about creating futures for guys like this, because I got to suspect they're kind of they're pretty good kids, right? <laughs> don't, don't, don't disappoint me, right? Is he okay? Huh? Is he okay? Is he a good brother? <laughs> yeah. They're okay. All right. That's, a, that's the most you can get out of a brother is that they're okay. But this is about Donovan and Devon. It's about all the other families that are going to be here. It's about all the other futures that we will create by creating great spaces to live. And so when we fight these battles, when we struggle against sometimes vehement neighborhood opposition for citing these things, this, these are not easy. But we do it because it matters. Today we celebrated at Dorothy Day for breakfast. And Dorothy Day is like the emergency room uh, for the problems that we face in the community. What we celebrate here today is, is that kind of that discharge uh, from the hospital, maybe, if, if that's a, a, the right analogy. I can't quite figure out exactly how to say that. But, but what, we, what we can do here, again, is to create futures for our families and for our children. And that's the greatest gift that we can give anybody. This is truly a gift, Steve. Thank you for PPL. Thank you for our partnerships. Mary and everybody else, Chris Tolbert. I'm just thrilled with this, and I hope you guys appreciate it the cookies <laughs> and go get some more thank you very much thank you mayor if the papers are accurate though you got at least four more years uh, coming up here so uh, this project was was basically underway as as the political leadership and the ward changed but uh, 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 Councilmember Chris Tolbert has been nothing but supportive so Chris thank you very much for that and welcome your your remarks thank you Steve and as Mayor Coleman alluded to um, and with Pat Harris's leadership, this place is here. One of the benefits of following a successful and effective city council member is I don't have to do any of the work, but I get to come do, uh, take all the credit for it afterwards. <laughs> but Pat, Pat Harris really should be the one up here. Um, as I've learned on the city council, no matter what it is, positive or not positive, um, as John Kennedy always said, change disturbs. And any change disturbs. And, you know, Pat is the one who led this through the community process to make sure that it happened, to make sure that um, opposition or any, any issues that could have happened to change down here um, was dealt with. And I think it's good change. I remember the, the video story, and, I, and I can't, looking at this place and walking through it, I can't even picture that video story anymore, which is fantastic <laughs> that that's out of my brain. Um, but the video store that I drive by every day and wondered how it even existed. Um, but this is a beautiful place, and on behalf of the Highland Park community, on, on behalf of the city of St. Paul, we are so happy to have all these new families, all these new kids, all the future of America, all the future of Minnesota, right here um, to raise their families and be a part of our community. So welcome to Highland Park. Um, thank you for all your for all your work to make this possible. Um, one person I want to say, Pat asked me to say this, um, Al Carlson from PD really, from a background perspective, made this possible with his creative financial leadership. And uh, he really should, he does a great job for all of St. Paul, but on this project particularly, he um, really made it possible. So thank everybody for their work. I appreciate you. Well, none of these projects happened without an active role from Minnesota Housing. And uh, I was in Washington a couple weeks ago, and uh, the consensus is that Minnesota has the most effective housing finance agency commissioner in the country. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mary Tigerthal. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Steve really just said that because we have another round of awards coming up pretty soon here. So, um, 
Well, as a resident of Highland Park, I get to drive by this beautiful building every day, and uh, I have to say it really is a big improvement over the video store. I remember the video store. <laughs> Um, there's a few things that haven't been said that I wanted to point out that people might not know about this project because they're a little bit invisible. One of them is that this was one of the earliest projects uh, funded by Minnesota Housing that really uh, embraced the idea of green community standards for construction. And so many of the things that you see around you that you might think not think about, like the pavement that you're standing on right now, is permeable so that there isn't a lot of runoff. The water runs in instead of running off into the sewers. And that's going to be increasingly important as we struggle with uh, water quality and being able to keep our Cities uh, very livable. So I want to uh, thank PPL for being uh, foresighted and really embracing those standards and uh, really want to thank a uh, member of our staff who's here, Jerry Narlock, in the back of the room who uh, leads our architect team and really helps to make those standards uh, be invisible and uh, still really make a difference. A really invisible thing about this property is one that was really set in bo motion by the person you're going to hear from next, and that's uh, my predecessor, Tim Marks. Uh, Tim, back in uh, 2004, worked with uh, Governor Pawlenty to uh, develop a business plan to end long-term homelessness in Minnesota. And the first step on that path to ending long-term homelessness was to make a commitment on the part of the state of Minnesota that we were going to provide 4,000 units of permanent supportive housing. Now, you might say, well, what's supportive housing? It's permanent good housing like you see here, but for families that need it, it also provides services that they need to live successful lives. And Part of what was a dream back in 2004, which has become a, an amazing reality to me, is that we will achieve that 4,000 unit goal this year. And what's even more amazing than that to me is that most of the units are completely unidentifiable. You probably do not know that within this beautiful building, 10 of the families that live here suffered homelessness, long-term homelessness, before they moved in. They're now living among other families just like them, supported with the services that they need to be successful. And that has happened not only here, but throughout the state of Minnesota, where our affordable housing development companies have really grabbed onto that concept of saying people who have had the unfortunate experience of experiencing homelessness shouldn't be singled out, but should be able to live side by side with other families, and there shouldn't be a stigma attached to that. So I want to thank PPL for their, um, their brave and tenacious work on this project but especially for including those 10 long-term homeless units. Congratulations, it's a great addition to the community. Thank you, Commissioner. And that, that service program that, that Commissioner Tingerthal referred to is really a partnership between Catholic Charities and Project for Pride and Living. So all of the residents who live here will, will benefit from a variety of services, but uh, the Catholic Charity staff will really take on the responsibility for the long-term homeless units. And uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, introduce a former classmate of mine, someone uh, who, like me, has had a hard time keeping a job over the years, so he tends to cycle <laughs> in and out of things, and was, in fact, the commissioner when this project just began. So, Tim, welcome, and you've had a long day. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Mayor, Commissioner, Council members, thank you very much. It is such a pleasure to be here to see come to fruition this project. And people often ask, do nonprofits work together? Uh, can they make sure that they're efficient and, and really focus on their core competency? And this partnership between PPL and Catholic Charities, where we provide the services to those long-term homeless families, is an example of that type of partnership and a very efficient partnership. It's also an example where philanthropy helps fill those temporary gaps. And the St. Paul Foundation stepped up to help make that service funding possible on a temporary basis until we can find permanent funding for it. And that's really really important. And so as the commissioner said, the f many of the families here have been experiencing homelessness for long periods of time. And let me just tell you about one of them. 
uh, it's not his real name, but a resident here, name of Andy, who has a daughter who was cycling in and out of homelessness for several years and stayed at the Family Service Center of Ramsey County, which Catholic Charities operates. And he had difficulty maintaining a job. He had other troubles in his life. He'd spend some time in the shelter, and you're only allowed to spend 30 days in that shelter, and then you have to move on. And so Andy was faced of having to move out of the shelter, move into a hotel, and spend down his assets one more time in that cycle of homelessness. But that was just at the time that this project was moving forward, and Andy and his daughter are now living here. Andy is employed in two jobs in the neighborhood and is being successful. That's what ending long-term homelessness means. And so on behalf of my colleagues at Catholic Charities who are doing the real work, thank you for putting all this work into this partnership. We are so proud of it and so proud of the work that you and we are doing. Thank you.